Hello and welcome to another video about the Comedia headless capabilities. In this video, I would like to tell you how Comedia provides persisted queries in REST. From the previous videos, you know that the Comedia headless client is based on GraphQL. For security reasons, you might not want to expose the full GraphQL API to the internet. Instead, you might want to restrict clients to only be able to send specific queries. These queries are already stored in the server and are therefore called persisted queries. In my insomnia here, you can see that I have prepared a call to our by now well-known GraphQL API. But instead of a POST request with a GraphQL query as the body, I simply have a GET request. And in the query parameters, you can see that I ask for a query with the name PAGE and query parameters are handed in as a JSON object. So you can see that I don't send the query, but rather it is persisted on the server under the name PAGE. If I switch the name of the query to something the server does not know, I get a query not found error. Let's check out how this works. For this, let's switch to the IDE. This is the Comedia Blueprint workspace. On the left, you can see that I have opened a specific resource folder in the headless server module. And in this folder, you can see several GraphQL files. One of these files is called page.graphql. This is the exact query that Comedia has executed. Comedia simply picks up all queries in this package and makes them available under their file name without the file extension. So, if I want to make a new query available to all my apps, all I need to do is place it in this folder and redeploy the headless server. And my apps can use it with the file name as the ID. Now, what about REST? Let's switch back to Insomnia to see how REST looks like in Comedia. Here is another request, but this time it points to a REST style URL, with a page ID inlined in the URL path instead of providing it as a query parameter. Let's switch back to the IDE to see how this works. Every query that is available as a persisted query can be used for a REST endpoint, configured in a simple properties file. In this file, you can see that several endpoints are configured. On the left is the ID of the persisted query. For example, this is the page query we have seen earlier. On the right is the URL pattern and the path variable mapping, with the latter in curly brackets. Now, if you have watched very closely, you might have noticed that the responses of the persisted queries and the REST request were very similar, but not quite identical. Let me show them to you side by side, so we can really inspect the differences. As you can see, on the REST response, the encapsulating data.content levels are missing. This is because in REST mappings, we can apply a transformation to the response. Let's go back to the IDE to see how this works. In this package, you can see several JSLT files. The files are automatically mapped to the REST mappings via the query ID. So, for our page endpoint, the file page.jslt defines the transformation. This example, as outlined earlier, simply unwraps the outer layers of the JSON. Very complex transformations are possible here. Please see the official JSLT documentation for details. And with this, we have covered persisted queries and REST in Cormedia. Thank you, and see you in the next video.